You've probably seen the headlines. Supplements destroy your liver and dietary supplements are dangerous. But is that actually true or is it just another health scare? Well, I recently got an Apple News notification telling me that supplements destroy my liver. And I clicked on it and it was linked to a real study. But let's actually break down what that study says. The study definitely has a scary title. It's called an eightfold increase in dietary supplement induced acute liver failure over the past 25 years, which sounds terrifying, but let's break it down further. In the US, only 300 to 400 people per year are going to experience acute liver failure from a drug that's non-Tylenol related. And with supplements accounting for only 24% of this now, that's 70 to 100 cases of acute liver failure from supplements per year. Now compare that to the 250 million Americans taking supplements and you get basically a 0.00004% risk of acute liver failure from taking supplements. So yes, supplements can cause liver failure or the worst type of liver injury but the risk is extremely low. But what about a more mild form of liver injury? Well, studies report that there are three cases of supplement-induced liver injury per 100,000 people, which given the amount of people in America specifically that take supplements, that amounts to about a 0.004% risk of having any liver injury due to supplements. So again, still very low. And to put this into context even further, Tylenol is the cause of 50% of all drug-induced liver injuries. That means that Tylenol is about two times more likely than supplements to cause liver injury. So yes, supplements can cause liver injury, but Tylenol is twice as likely to do the exact same thing. And yet no one is telling you to avoid Tylenol on your Apple news notifications. And neither am I, truthfully. I just want you to take Tylenol correctly, just like I want you to take supplements correctly. So let's walk through how supplements could actually cause liver injury, the actual mechanisms, and that will show us how to actually avoid those mechanisms and bring our already very low risk of liver injury from supplements to nearly zero. The first mechanism for how supplements could cause liver damage is direct liver cell toxicity. Basically, there's a component of the supplement that attacks liver cells specifically, causes some oxidative stress, hurts the mitochondria of the cell, etc. Supplements that do this at a higher frequency and truthfully are ones that I would just avoid completely are usnic acid, kava, kratom, and HCA or hydroxy citric acid. However, we also have to be careful for certain supplements if we take them at too high of doses. Some of those supplements include green tea extract at doses of greater than 800 milligrams per day, and even common vitamins when megadosed, such as vitamin A, niacin or vitamin B3, and vitamin E. So how do we reduce the risk of direct liver cell toxicity? Well, one, avoid those supplements I just told you. Two, if you're taking another supplement and you really wanna be safe, look it up and make sure that there's no reported cases of liver toxicity with that supplement. And three, keep your supplement dosing to the recommended dosages. Do not mega dose. That's where you're going to raise your risk a little bit for liver injury from supplements. The second main mechanism is metabolic overload or essentially genetic differences that lead to liver injury from supplements. Essentially, the liver has to metabolize out all supplements and everyone has different genetic variability in regards to how their liver is able to metabolize things. Some people metabolize supplements or drugs very quickly, some very slowly. If you're someone who metabolizes supplements very slowly, you can build up toxic metabolites of those supplements and then they can impact the liver. Supplements that are heavily metabolized through the liver or work heavily in the liver are those such as red yeast rice, curcumin, ashwagandha, and black cohosh. So you definitely don't need to fully avoid these ones, but I would follow these tips to make sure that you're not going to get liver injury from these supplements. One, try to stick to single ingredient supplements as much as possible. The multi-ingredient supplements are actually the cause of 70% of the liver injury cases from supplements. So if you stick to the individual ingredients, you'll know exactly what you're taking and you won't be overloading your liver's ability to metabolize out your supplements. Secondarily, if you're taking one of those supplements, I would plan to get your liver function test or that ALT, AST, ALKFAS, get those tested at least once a year to really make sure that you're not incurring a liver injury gradually over time from taking these supplements. The third mechanism is contamination and unlisted ingredients. Basically, some supplements can be contaminated with heavy metals or other toxins that could cause liver injury. Or bodybuilding supplements could contain anabolic steroids that would definitely cause liver injury. So how do we avoid this mechanism? Well, make sure that you're getting good third-party tested supplements. 
I really wouldn't skimp and just get the cheapest supplement available because it could contain these things. So really do your research here on the brands. The fourth mechanism for supplements causing liver injury is something called cholestatic disease, or basically that some supplements can cause bile to build up in the liver. The main culprits of this are ones that we've mentioned, ashwagandha, curcumin, oral aloe vera, black cohosh, etc. For this one, again, only take the supplements you need, take them in recommended doses, and really watch out for signs of cholestatic liver disease, such as yellowing of the skin and eyes or jaundice, right upper abdominal pain, fatigue, skin itchiness, etc. And the fifth mechanism is immune mediated liver disease from supplements. Basically, supplements that trigger an autoimmune like response or where your immune system basically attacks your own liver. The supplements that are most known to cause this are the ones that we just listed for the fourth mechanism. And again, avoid this by taking the correct dose taking the single ingredients when you can and getting it from a good quality source. But if you do have pre-existing autoimmune conditions, you're going to be more likely to develop this. So if you're taking one of these supplements that we just listed and you have an autoimmune condition, I would get your liver enzymes tested probably even more frequently than just a year. So how do we avoid liver injury from supplements, even though our risk is already about zero? Well, avoid those multi-ingredient supplements as much as you can. Stick with the single ingredient supplements that you actually need. Buy from reputable brands and use recommended doses. Also, avoid those supplements that we said to completely avoid. And if you're going to take the supplements that are on the list of could cause liver injury, even at a low percentage risk, then I would get your liver enzymes tested at least once a year and watch out for signs of liver disease. And if you want to know what supplements you should be taking, check out this video for the top five supplements I think almost everybody will need.